previously on Into the Motherlands. Welcome to Back to the Motherlands, presented by Dicey Amazons, a quick recap show discussing the development and events of Into the Motherlands campaign featuring Tanya DePass, Christina Ariel, Michael Sinclair II, DJ Knight, Abria Iyengar, and storyteller Eugenio Vargas. I'm Candy, executive producer of the Dicey Amazons and one of your hosts. And I'm your other host, Pi, the head producer of Dicey Amazons. So let's just jump right into season three, episode eight. Uh, this one was interesting. Okay, so Major Rafia jumps on the on call, all, all call, and is basically asking for an update. She wants to know what had happened. Give me a status update of what you know what is what is trans transgressed. <clears throat> so Sila nine one nine and Salona uh, have made this elaborate like southern style like breakfast buffet uh for the crew and it's got we're talking fancy flatware we're talking the fine china you know that your grandma never lets you use uh even Wee has his own little table where like he can charge and like live his best life and get the day started you know i it, it's a wonderful look <laughs> so Sila ends up burning some quiches uh, because she set the oven to what forty five hundred. Yeah, which, degrees. Yeah, yeah Silona. I mean, yeah. Even if you like, I don't know, account for like Celsius to Fahrenheit. That's not a. Uh, doesn't doesn't quite work. That's not how that math works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Silona. This wasn't Silona nine one nine. This was Silona. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, then from there, uh, Silent Night when I wants to talk to the crew uh, and basically give them a chance to like, hey, like we've been through some some stuff, some things have happened, some roles may or may not have passed or failed, uh, and if you wanna if you wanna share your thoughts about it, I'm here. Let me know. You know, we can talk about it. Uh, so Koza uh, actually uh, responds to this and says that she's like mentally and physically injured right now, which she was, she, she almost died. So, um, so she's still trying to deal with that. And then with that proceeds to tell Invicta that they had like a nice slumber party, uh, the night before, cause they're both in their robes, uh, at dinner and mm -hmm. Invicta kind of has a headache. Uh, and you know, she's maybe a little bit out of it, but mostly just kind of has a, a bad headache from, uh, hitting her head, um, at the, at yeah. the station. She, so, took a, she took a pretty nasty fall. She did. Actually. She did. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, so she's like, she's like, I know I have a headache, but I'm pretty sure we didn't have a slumber party. Like, what's going on? That's, that's not my definition. <laughs> right. <party>. Yeah. <laughs> and so she's just, she just like you know, uh, you know, it's, it's almost that hangover like thing going on she's just like no i can't handle all this attention right now puts her hood up and mm -hmm. just kind of like I'm, I'm gonna ignore y'all <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so um silent 919 offers the crew um some uh, breakfast creme brulee <laughs> and silona ends up destroying one when she uses her gun to try to brulee uh, one of the creme brulees <laughs> I mean, I see where you're going with the intense heat and whatnot. But right. We need you to dial it back down. Just a little bit. Easy bake oven level, you know? Like, easy bake you oven. Know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but fortunately, uh, Silent Number and I did make extras. Um, so there's, there's still plenty to go around. Mm -hmm. um, Invicta, who's still kind of like... Did we have a slumber party? Maybe she thinks she may be hallucinating uh, because of all this kind of weird stuff that they're talking about at the table. Uh, yeah. But I Ikimbo reassures her that this is pretty much normal for this this group of people. Like they just kind of talk about weird stuff all the time. <laughs> Some of the things that are said in this show that are taken out of context. <laughs> like. <yeah. laughs> um. So Koza, who's sort of in a rush uh, to get her creme brulee. Uh, actually tries to use her plasma cutter <laughs> to relay. Um, it doesn't go well, and she ends up, like, cracking the dishes that those are in. So now you've got another two uh, mm -hmm. that have been destroyed. Uh, but yeah. Ikimba comes to the rescue. Uh, he's like, okay, look, let me let me make this for you. He, he grabs the torch, <laughs> and uh, it actually makes one so that she can get to eating. <laughs> plasma? 
Let's look better. Like, we yeah. uh, dial it down. You know, <laughs> like we're we're at a twelve. I, between her and uh, Silona, man, they're just all all sorts of extra uh, right now. Taking a flamethrower to it, basically, <laughs> and you, you know, it's too much excitement for first thing in the morning. <laughs> um, so as they're eating, um, Silona informs Silona One Nine that all of the information that everybody has gathered has been downloaded to the ship. Um, and so they take a look at it. They, they recognize a few things. They recognize some things that could be like genetic code. Also mm-hmm. some mo- mo- molecular structures. <laughs> See, those words are hard. They are. And Buto and star charts. Um, and so, uh, you can kind of tell that the group was a little like iffy on the Buto and star charts. Like, oh, okay. What's, you know, what's the deal with those? Um, but uh, one one actually really good thing is that between Eli, um and and what Silona has, they're actually now able to understand the number system of the alien language, um, and so they're getting closer to hopefully breaking <laughs> the language uh, in itself. <laughs> Which honestly, I didn't think it was going to take that long. Yeah, yeah, but they just got the information, so it's still like you know. It's it's still it's like the next day. Yeah, it's the next day. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'll stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then um, and then Victor s- still has this headache. She's like, Akimba, can you can you take me to the med bay? Like, can, let's see if we can you know get rid of this headache. And so they go to the med bay. Um, Eli starts to use like while they're doing that, Eli um, starts to use the number system uh, to try to decrypt the language a little bit more. Um, and then Koza, you know, jumps in, starts running some data as well for them. Um, and so they're getting their cryptography on right now <laughs> in the <Yeah>. kitchen <laughs> or in the dining area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's basically like two. I don't know. It reminds me of like two buddies hanging out, like working on homework, which is what I did a lot. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're still doing cryptography. Yeah. So uh, then from there, Silent 919 is processing the data that she has gotten from Salona. Uh, she's cleaning the kitchen and she's and teaching Salona how to take care uh, of the crew uh, all at the same time, which there, there's a, there are a lot of, of, of unique, unique acts, asks, asks. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of of the crew, and uh, I I'm interested to see how uh, Salona works uh, works on all these tasks. Yeah. Um. Uh. So then we're gonna cut over to the med bay, uh, where Invicta asks and Kimba like basically like please tell me what happened. My head is all fuzzy. Uh, and Kimba uh, tells Invicta about the fight with the robots and also says that she may have had a party with Koza <laughs> and. Like, please, just correct me if I'm wrong, Candy, but, like, he's messing with her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, he's like, yes, it's it's definitely a possibility that you would have a party. And she's just like, no, there is no possibility. We didn't start off on the right foot. Like, there, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, I want to see how this plays out, you know. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So then from there, uh, Eli is walking by and like overhears the conversation and cuts in and says that uh, she didn't have a party with Koza. And so, Eli, we stand, you know, but like, you could have let it play out a little longer. You know? just, a, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, like it was kind of fun. Uh, so then the crew starts to hear uh, a distress signal um, and I'm, you know, back full attentive at this point what is going on um but this distress signal is coming from inside of their own heads and i'm very concerned yeah <laughs> yeah as as were they <laughs> yes absolutely so uh akimba goes to scan himself uh in the med bay because obviously if you're hearing something you should probably do a full body, just the once over. Yeah. Um, but the voice tells him that it's not an implant, and like this is actually like we actually need help. Like please come and 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 you know give us your hand. Uh, and that their ship was disabled, and they were hit by a spinning ship <laughs> trapped in the gravity well of this black hole. Okay, so, so yeah. <laughs> my first thought. <laughs> Was remember the ship that I lie <laughs> yeeted? <laughs> that was my first thought. 
yeah. it didn't come up in the episode, so I don't know if that's something that we're going to find out ever. <laughs> Okay. But I'm wondering if, if it was ship <laughs> that he, he yeeted off into yeah, the nether. I mean, yeah, you know, I, why not? I feel like that would be a great way for Eugenio to, like, bring, like, that shit that is just spinning uh, in the darkness of space back into the story. Consequences. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I stand. You know, the story's yeah. telling up at all. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, <clears throat> so the voice in their heads uh, sort of introduced themselves. It's about a, a roundabout introduction, but the person speaking apparently does not have a, ga- a name. Um, and so they maybe are a collective or something. We don't know exactly, but apparently they, they are the Ungobu. Um, they're from very, very far away and they don't travel very often outside of their star system. Um, and it doesn't sound like they get a lot of visitors either. So it's something that none of them have probably encountered. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Kosa asked this voice for some privacy um, and they uh, comply and they severed the connection. <clears throat> so uh, they start to discuss how they felt about these people or this person being in their minds um, and possibly blowing them up with Koza being the voice of reason here, which that's wow. a switch. That's a switch. And even she recognized it. She's like, wait a minute. How am I the one like, saying not to blow people up? <laughs> yeah. Usually it's the opposite. Right. So um, I'm very interested to see like the next episode and, and kind of what happens. Because they're all like, it's a trap. <laughs> yeah. Silent Night, and I, like pretty much everybody's like, this is a trap. No, you know. <laughs> they, <Really>? Yeah. <laughs> so I like doesn't feel well after these people being in his head and as in Misa Jai, uh, they actually feel very scared because it reminds them of something uh, that happens when they're children um, and there's these voices in their head. And so they're basically scared. Like they're really, really scared. And I was, I was feeling it like um, Michael was playing that, that really well. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I like goes to lay down, he leaves um, and the rest of the crew actually put it up to a vote. And um, the majority says that they should go and find out what's happening uh, with this ship. And so they do. Uh, Koza actually jumps on navigation. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, the rest of the crew sort of prepare, um, like some weapons and some other things. Um, yeah. And so while the ship is on its way, Koza actually goes to her workshop. And she decides that she wants to make um, some helmets uh, for... Um, Silent number nine and for Eli so that they can't get into their heads. And so she makes uh, some legally distinct, uh, very uh, haphazard Magneto helmets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I love it because also get out of my brain. Um, yeah. But, you know, uh, legally distinct. <laughs> yeah, legally distinct, yes. <laughs> Yeah, and then my favorite moment happens where uh, Kosa gives I a hug, and I, I yes. love it. Yes, love uh, it. yeah, she gives the the uh, helmet to Eli, and he's he is torn up, um, and yeah. just I, I was ready to cry uh, with him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's definitely uh, something there, and I enjoyed the uh, mm-hmm. like I don't know the discussion around you know like trauma. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and so, um, while they're on their way, uh, Tyler and I actually does call Major Rafia to kind of update her about the situation. Um, but a few hours, uh, later they do arrive at the black hole and locate the ship. Um, and it seems to be partly biological in nature. That seemed important. We don't know why it's important yet. Um, yeah. but it is. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, and so, and then... <laughs> The Angobu contact them again. They don't get through to Silent M19 and Eli because the helmets are working, which is great. But they also say that it is important you are here. And I felt shivers <laughs> just now That's saying it lie. and remembering yeah. because I'm like, that wording is very, it's very it's weird. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very certain. And even uh, the crew felt I- it. They were like, what? Everyone. <laughs> Everyone was like, uh, hmm, hmm, that's an interesting choice of words, you know? 
Yeah. And, and then uh, Pi's favorite, so, the cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I, for one, am very excited to find out what's going to happen yep. actually coming up right after this. So yes. thanks for everyone for turning back, tuning back in to Back to the Motherlands. Stay tuned for episode nine coming up right after this and every Wednesday on twitch.tv slash Cypher of Tear at 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central. And if you want to check out more content from the Dicey Amazons, check us out on twitch.tv slash Dicey Amazons. And enjoy the show. <laughs> Bye!
Centuries ago, the Malian emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great western ocean to discover new lands. They succeeded in ways no one could imagine. Now, 3,000 years later, their descendants have made a home for themselves on a new planet, and the calls of adventure and discovery are stronger than ever. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the high and old blade keeper. D.J. Knight as Akemba, the Musalian bio-priest. Michael Sinclair II as Eli, the Mesagi Lightbringer. Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Monsagene bio-priest. Abria Iyengar as Koza, the Hyenol Fixer. And Ahenio Vargas as the Storyteller, as they explore new planets, make new friends, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to The Motherlands. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode nine, season three of Into the Motherlands, and a very happy belated birthday to Into the Motherlands. Holy poop, it's been a year since we started doing this with y'all, uh, and that's sort of overwhelming, but hey, we made it. We're here. Uh, my name is Eugenio. Uh, I will be your storyteller this evening. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm very, very excited for this penultimate episode of season three of Into the Motherlands, but before we get into any of that, we should go around and introduce the other the lovely faces here with me. Uh, I will start uh, with our missing fixer tonight. Uh, normally with us, oh, right below me, in fact. Normally with us, uh, we have Abria Iyengar playing Koza, our high and all fixer. Unfortunately, she is uh, won't be able to be with us this evening, but we look forward to having her back next week for the finale. All right, now I leave it up to you, Chaos. Go. Oh, it's done for Chaos. Then I guess it's done for me. Hi, I'm DJ. <laughs> I'm not really chaotic. I just feel like sometimes I want to use my voice changer and sound kind of uh, <coughs> awesome. It's nice. Uh, I'll, I'm Akimba, your Mesalian bio priest. Our pronouns are he, him. Um, you can find me on the internet at DJ Knight. I was trying to think of what else we missed. Or what else we normally <laughs> just get you, into. who you are and what you play. Like, who I am and my pronouns. And yeah, and then and we play yeah. video games on the internet on occasion. You guys are <laughs> awesome. Thank you for your faces showing up here. And I'm going to shout out. Also, chaos. That was it. I just wanted to say chaos again in a fancy voice. Hello. Perfect. I will Hi. join in such chaos. Uh, not really. Maybe. All right. Here yeah. we go. Um, that was chaotic in its own. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michael Sinclair II. I go by Michael Critz everywhere. I play Eli. They are a Misajai uh, Lightbringer. Their pronouns are they, them. My pronouns are he, him. And totally excited to get another episode in and, uh, you know, happy belated birthday to us. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, I don't remember who went second. Well, I think we've been doing this order for a while now, and I don't remember who went second to last. That's last the point. Night. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Is that it? That's all we get tonight? Is that all we get from Augustina tonight? Thank you for being here. We appreciate your support over this last year and three seasons of Into the Motherlands. We have really enjoyed our time with you. We hope that you will continue on this adventure with us around Patoa as we explore and learn new things about ourselves and civilization. I'm Christina Ariel and I play Captain Sila 919, the Montagene bio priest, and also just really, you know, just really glad to be here, guys. Yeah. Have some fun. Bye. Let's do it. Last but not least. Dang, yeah, but I should have gone first. Hi, <laughs> I'm Cypher. I'm Tanya. I play Cypher or vice versa. Uh, but tonight I am your high and blade keeper and Victor pronouns are she, her for both of us. All right. And That's it's the been crew. a whole year. It has been a whole year. Can you believe it? I got that. I got like, you know, we saw it on the Twitters and then like the time hop reminded us. And I was like, I can't. How is what? Here we are. 
it one year like in. It feels like it's been 84 years. It doesn't also, it feels like we started last week. I don't know if you feel both of those, but I most certainly do. I was going back in my notebook looking at notes from season one and I was like, wait, didn't that happen like three weeks ago? Anyway, Mm-mm. we have some thank yous uh, helping to get us here a year later. Um, and so who do we have to thank? Well, we have Die Hard Dice, of course, to thank. Uh, we've been thanking them from the, since the beginning and we are so grateful that they've stuck with us. Uh, we do have our Musalian Skies set at Die Hard Dice, but there's all kinds of other beautiful click clack math rocks over there that you can check out. So go to their website, dieharddice.com, fill up that cart. And when you do, uh, and you go to check out, use code MOTHERLANDSRPG at checkout for 10% off of your whole order. Uh, next up, we wanna thank Blue Microphones. Uh, for supplying us with some equipment to make sure that we sound good for you all. Uh, Very grateful they've been with us from the beginning as well. Uh, Check out their supply at bluemike.com. Third up, as usual, we have to say a huge and gigantic thank you to the people over at Cortex by Fandom. Our stream game is powered by Cortex and we are so excited to have been able to show you all the system for these last three seasons. Uh, You should follow them on the Twitters at Fandom Tabletop for the whole organization's news. And if you want to zero in on Cortex stuff, you can follow at Cortex RPG for all kinds of information. As usual, we are going to be giving away a PDF uh, rulebook for Cortex during the show. Uh, do be sure to keep an eye on chat. Mods will keep you all informed on how to enter. You do have to be here in the channel, paying attention and responding in chat if your name is pulled. If it is not, we will unfortunately have to draw another name. And that's just the way it goes. I know. Take care of yourselves, go for your bios, go for your waters, but just keep an eye and be aware. Uh, We've had a few folks miss and we hate to see it. So uh, giveaway for Cortex rulebook tonight, can't wait. Last and most certainly not least, uh, keeping us here all three seasons, we have to thank Twitch. Uh, Twitch, uh, Into the Motherlands rather, premieres exclusively here on Twitch every week. And we are very grateful uh, for their support in making our trip to the stars a reality. those are our thank yous. And I, I guess I should just say, hey, thanks to you all. You know, you showed up for us in season one. You, you, you bugged us about a season two uh, into oblivion, which we asked you to do, right? Because we needed to know if y'all wanted it and you did. Uh, and, and your support has also been um, hugely important. Obviously the Kickstarter went off astronomically. Uh, and so, yeah, here on this one year anniversary, our first B day of into the no not B day sounds too much like B Dave birthday of into the motherlands. Uh, our fifth thanks is to you all. Thank you for for sticking with us. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that I don't know. Anybody else want to say anything before we hop in? Oh. What do you? Oh God, I wasn't Please watching. Like DJ and I just had a moment making jokes. <laughs> I love oh, it. I was just laughing at me licking myself with other emotes in chat. Like- <laughs> Yeah, why not? Let's like let's get weird. How do you not like Angie? <laughs> like, obviously, obviously. If I, if I may, like, I would say that right. the Campbell is quite lickable. Just throwing it out there. So like, Boo! the option to do it was there mm. in front of me, so I had to. Do mm. it. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Happy birthday! All jokes aside, this has been an absolutely amazing year. Um, seeing the support in this community. Mm. And how it has grown into something that <laughs> I'd not expected. And that's right. This me lol at the Angie Kimba. Appreciate you. Uh, yeah. but no, like this this has been an amazing year. Uh seeing things that I never saw before done regularly is impressive. And it's all thanks to Cypher, the team behind the scenes, everybody that's out here in front of everybody every week. But yeah, we do a lot of stuff, but none of that would matter if it wasn't for the community that comes to show up to pay attention to it. So thank you all. We appreciate you. And you're awesome. That. Well, I do want to make space if anyone else wants to say anything a little bit later, but if it's okay with everybody, uh, we can do that like mid-show and then end of show. But two of the five of us have done it. So should we do a quick recap of the recap and get on in? I think we should. Uh, So once again, uh, there's only one week left of this, uh, but if you all would like, and you haven't been showing up a little bit early every week, show up about 15, 20 minutes early next week to catch uh, Dicey Amazons and Fung Fu Pie's awesome recap of uh, the previous week's episode. It's a great refresher. They have a great time doing it very clearly, and it's a ton of fun to watch. So uh, last chance to do that is next week. So show up a few minutes early, check out their recap, but here's my TLDR quick recap. Uh, You all were, 
hurtling through space away from the planet that you all got attacked by robots. Um, you got away from the planet and you began to uh, examine the data that you'd gotten. You began to work on translations and identifying the other schematics and images that they had on all of their data. Uh, and while you did that, you began a journey to follow yet another communication signal uh, that Akemba had discovered emanating from that planet, going deeper, further away from Batoa, deeper into space, which you all decided to track down, got to see where these mysterious machines are coming from. Uh, and so you did, you followed it. You worked on analyzing languages and images and schematics, doing the best that you could. And then you got a distress call. And the distress call came in your heads and it was kind of unpleasant for everyone, but, but I lie in particular. Uh, and the distress call brought you to a place where a very strange ship full of very strange individuals that you have not seen, but have spoken with uh, was falling into a black hole and they were able to save themselves temporarily by using their incredible thrust from their engines. Uh, which was unlike anything that any of you have ever been able to see. If any ship, if any torch ship, even the sphere, were that close to a black hole, you're not convinced that your, your engines could save you like theirs did. But they were, uh, and they, but they were slowly falling into the black hole. You all hurried as best you could to the, uh, to the location that they had sent you, far enough away from the black hole to not be in danger, but close enough to see this ship this Angobu ship, uh, and they told you when you arrived that things had gotten a bit more dire. Uh, in the time that it took you to arrive there to their location, one of their four engines had gone out, and they are only on 75% thrust, which of course has seriously degraded their timeline before they fall into this black hole. And they understood that you all were concerned that this is a dangerous situation, that there is mistrust, that you do not know them, that they wormed their way into your heads without permission for that distress call. And all they said at the end of last week's episode was, we understand and whatever you decide, it is important that you are here now. And that's where we find our crew aboard the sphere. You're able to, uh, with the view screens, you can see this sort of massive, deeply sort of soul deep, disturbing nothingness way in the, I mean, it's just a tiny pinprick of, of a black hole from where you are, but even so you can just feel that there is nothing there um, or everything there, I guess is technically what a black hole is, but anyway, you get the idea. Uh, and this ship, this strange ship, Victus is waiting to see what happens because the last two times we ran into strange things. We got the haplock and then we got pirates. So it's true. It's true. So it's the distress just signal's there. not good for you all. <laughs> she's just been there like, all right, well, y'all told me I was wrong for wanting to eliminate the threat. Let's see what happens. Uh I will walk up to the sticks because I don't think I was piloting up to this moment. So I I don't sure. I don't know whoever it was, but that I'll go Kimba ahead. definitely was, and he had all the weapons locked and loaded. You know? okay. <laughs> yeah, case, that I remember too. Life is logical. Our lives are also very logical when dealing with things that we don't know what they are. <laughs> uh, am I cool to pilot the, the thing, or did you want to keep piloting? Nah, man, go for it. Cool. All right. Or should I say, nah, fam. Gotta respect like everything. Thank you. So uh, yeah, so uh, Eli, you can you can hop in there to those uh, to sort of the nav panel. Uh, Ikemba was was guiding it with the with the uh, information that you all had received, but mm -hmm. now it's pretty obvious where where the problem lie lies. Um, I don't know what is going on, uh, but <laughs> I will take us in. Uh, to where, um, I guess, right outside where we'd feel like any sort of relevant tug of the black hole. So we're not sure. anywhere near where they are. But no, we're, no, no. We're at a place where we can make decisions and maybe react quickly should we do so. Yeah, yeah. That that target obviously uh, is continuing to sort of 
get further away, right? You all are going to get to a hard stop if this ship is continuing to fall. But you definitely feel like you're about as close as you're ever going to be. Uh, and you can pile it in there. And I, I think, I lie. I think you really do have to give a little juice to keep yourselves a little further back. Mm -hmm. um, even if, even at this distance, you know, that is a, yeah, on a Basically, cosmic scale. You know how, like, they, they have, like, an imminent time they're going to hit the black hole? Mm -hmm. Like, think of that as, like, when you're downloading a program and it says, like, five minutes. I don't yeah. want, I just want it to be where we just start the downloading process. Right, like, right, right. <laughs> I just want to be Got at, it. like, the... The 6,654 days until you hit the black hole. That's where I want it. Like right there is where I want to be. With the little packet going yeah, back. Yeah, Just that's really it. slowly. Yeah, got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> yeah, all right. So you all are, I mean, this is as close as you're going to get. Um, and the Angobu have been, you know, they told you, they understand. It's important that you're here and they are letting you, you know, they haven't, those of you who could still hear them uh, have not have not heard from them again. What is um? No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, but that's. I was just gonna be like. Um. <laughs> so, what are we doing? Um. I don't have any good suggestions because I really. I don't know how I feel about them. I don't feel like I'm too invested in helping them, but. Um, we should do something or make a decision because, being next to a black hole isn't the um. <laughs> nicest thing to be at i figured if we came this far and we we're at a black hole it might be a good idea to at least attempt to help them but again i could be wrong as you can see i lot of the weapons are ready if you at any moment feel that they would do us harm you feel free to do what you feel um, I'm not the captain, so I won't be issuing when to fire weapons. Commander, how you doing over there? Kyla has been silently sitting and just running analysis over the stats that she got from Torch about survival rates. Mm, they're not great. Just, so she's just playing it over and she finally just looks up and I think that we should vote. On? The likelihood of survival is not high. Or do you want to risk your lives for you? I voiced my objection and was um, told I was wrong, so. No, we're not talking about the past. I want to know, do you all care? There's a large risk attached to this. I want to know that you're okay with this. We're dying for people I don't even know and I don't know if they're harmful. Not really. Kemba? I feel it. We've done our minimum of coming to check out if the source is, if we can help them. And not die, that would be preferred, but if, um, if we need to turn their ship into dust to survive, it's an easy decision for me, but I am prepared to offer them assistance. Hello? Mm. It would be against my promise or oath or of um, rescuing people who are in dire situations. Um, but there is also a reason why there's never been a manual or um, any instruction of how to save someone uh, nearing a event horizon of a black hole. So um, I, it's not preferred. I, I would prefer not to just so that we wouldn't um we wouldn't compromise our lives but uh, i know that it is something that i've 
made a a oath to do at some point, but uh, I I am actually not quite sure. In an ideal world, the sphere would be outfitted with some form of kaiju that we could send out that came out and was made to the specific size that we would need and we could pilot it and engineer it and take it right in there and be safe here controlling it. Unfortunately, I didn't have that idea and didn't get into the schematics. Do we have a tractor beam? Not that is strong enough to pull them from where they are now. Um, you could slow them down. You could buy yourselves time with it probably, but not pull them out. I don't want to risk my crew. Mm -hmm. But I also know we're here to help, here to I don't feel comfortable sending anyone over there. With that in mind, I volunteer to go alone. No. We've come this close to a black hole. Something that devours everything that it touches. And we have no idea what happens on the other side. The lives on that ship exist. Otherwise, they would not have been able to contact us. It makes sense that we not sacrifice the entire crew for those we do not know. But on short trip to attempt to fix a drive and then come back here makes sense if what we if were stuck out back? into the if we were stuck in the stranded depth of space and a ship came near to us and said ah, we're not sure about you we'd rather not all we right die. As what if, if you would die? What if I what? What if you get stuck on the ship? Do you want to die with them? I would prefer not to die. But how far off of our course are we to attempt to save lives at the edge of a black hole? If we don't at least attempt to save their lives, then it will have been a taunt. If we were in the black of space and a ship came within range to save us and said, mm, I'm good. How enraged would we all be? And when he says that, he looks at everybody. Very, but we die soon, so it wouldn't matter. And therein lies the question, how soon would we die? Would we wallow for days, for weeks? having reached out and gotten in touch with someone but not actually been saved how long would we suffer knowing that we were that close to someone saving our lives well from what I've read it to them seems like we're waiting out here forever um, which actually at this point could be like I think too hard about too. the physics of time and quantum mechanics for this right now. <laughs> hey, you know, I know some things. No, so. you, you're absolutely right. I was like, <laughs> it gets like, weird. My thought process you think this too entire much time about is it. like, we're close. I've seen Interstellar. Like, how <laughs> yeah. much has time gone past when we left? Hmm. 
So I've been I trying wanted, to be quiet almost, this entire time. Please no, you're okay. Allow me. I, I also almost wanted to uh, do the Doctor Who thing where the ship is so long that time is different at one end than the other. I was like, oh, we only got two episodes. We have time for that shit. I, I could just <laughs> imagine they're like, these mofinkies are really out there for about a million years just looking at us. <laughs> They just chilling, watching us. Like they could have been over here years ago, and they're just looking at us. How sad! You, you know, you know we're you know we're nervous about a tough decision because we we pop it in with a little humor. The camera's already sold. Like jetpacks, he's gonna make moves. Uh, the longer we sit here, the longer they get close, the, the closer they come to death, and life is logical. If you all have your hearts set on this, then I will go. The likelihood that I'll survive is higher than any of you. Debatably, Hennio looking at me. <laughs> I thought I was muted. Oh, you just caught my face. Captain, Commander, I forget your rank. It's, it's high. Come and don't. There we are. Come and don't, Silent 919. Um, if you go, who's in charge of the ship? Invicta. Right. just looks at Invicta like, that seems fair, but <laughs> I feel like the both of you are Not quite irreplaceable, but obviously you're not irreplaceable. I mean, you're, 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 you're perfect as you are, but I can go and things here can continue as they are. Not sure. If, if our leader not goes, you are in charge. I get the feeling you don't want to be in charge. I could be wrong, of course, but it's a feeling. If you go, we no longer have a blade keeper. If ally yeah, well. goes, we no longer have someone that has the amazing capabilities that ally has and the amazing perspective that ally has that no none of us can ever understand. She made her in leadership and communication as a side degree that I know of. Oh, you mean my other masters? Yes. I would, right, I would think that that would translate to some form of, let's just say it. I trust all of you to be able to hold everything in my stead. I trust you to pilot, to save yourselves. But I don't trust you going over there. And she's like leaking a little oil and like trying to keep it as stoic as possible, but the idea of anything happening to any of you is not so, I can process quite a bit. I can't process that. All right, only on two conditions. One, we use the tractor beam to slow their descent into the black hole. Two, the minute it looks like you won't survive, we bring you back. You go tethered to this ship. Is that clear? Crystal. You have the command. All right. Not how I want to command, but it is what it is. And Ikemba, you are just as valuable on this crew as anyone else. Absolutely. You're irreplaceable. In a way. No. You are. Decide who am I going to spar with if you die. That I would allow you. Would you all do me a favor? Sure. Group hug. It's easy game. Kimba loves hugs. He's in there for that. Hug. I, I walk over. I give a hug. I'll let him like, this isn't goodbye. 
Don't go over there ready to self-sacrifice. Oh no, I have so many meals I want to prepare for you all in the future. I'll come back. Okay. Let's like rig it up. I like can you run the tractor beam. Yes. Um I'll have it prepped and ready. All right. And that is to slow the ship down or to hold Sila? Uh, if we can do both, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, that sort of makes sense. Get her down there on it and then hold it. Sure. Then we can pull her back if something goes wrong. Um, if I may... Uh, and and please don't think that I'm trying to discourage any course of action, but do you have a plan when you get there? I don't know if I ever had a plan. <laughs> Fair point. Let's get her out there. I have a question right. before we do anything that Akimbo <laughs> isn't yes, going to ask out loud just yet. Okay. Did Captain Silent 919 hear when they spoke to everybody? Uh, I, well, I don't know. Sila, did you end up taking that helmet off for that last one, or did you let them uh, report back to you? Because we had mentioned that you and and Eli have those helmets from uh, mm -hmm. from Koza, and I know Eli kept theirs on, but I... Did you as well? Koza I took it off to communicate you, but... at the end. Oh, that's know, right. Okay, yeah, so probably the not the first bit. To. Right, so not the first bit, but but she did respond at the end, so yeah. So, so part of it is that help? Does that I know that's what a cop oh, answer. Does that, that answer your question? <laughs> that stopped him from like saying like, um, I don't believe this is fair. Like, <laughs> it was like, I don't know if everybody heard everything. So he wanted to make sure that. Oh, sure, 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 sure. He wanted to make sure yeah. that. Feel free to brief me if you like. Of course, he briefs her and all the things that she might not have heard. That wasn't a question. Sure, it's just, sure. You just want to knowing go. that before she decided to leave the ship, it can't be one right. to verify. Like, all right, 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 you right, know everything that they said. Like, if you're gonna go and I can't, like, you gotta have all the information you need. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, Sila, are you then leaving the helmet behind? Or are you wearing it over there? Um, I am going to wear it until I get over and see what I'm dealing with. Okay. I right. want to be able to get safely on board without any kind of, like, I'll, Akimba, if you'll communicate with them and let them know that I'm on the way. Or should I tell them? Should I just surprise? <laughs> I like having, no. No, I like having the, like, the air of surprise on my side. We're fine. I mean, for what it's worth, okay. you're pointing a tractor beam at them, so, you know. But yeah, they won't know you're on But they won't know you're on it. Um, before I go, mm. thank you all for being. Mm. This is not final, but I do want to say climb every mountain, ford every stream, follow every rainbow, Till you find your dream in motivational speech software. And she's going to head out. Not to self delete that software. Overcomes, the chemist says, if you should fall into the sky, you may think time might pass you by. But I believe you would fly a thousand miles just to see us again. I mean, if I think about it, honestly, I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the captain to show up right here outside your door. It, like half of me wants to stop it and half of me, like if I ignore that their lyrics thinks it's really lovely, but it's real hard to ignore that their lyrics. I like shut it off like a sentence in. So I'm like, just nope. And Cypher's here, like, please don't get my channel DMCA. <laughs> All 
All saying right. the things, I don't think pause is compared to nah. singing the things. Yeah. All right. I'm out. You're out. Taking anything with you? Other than the helmet. I'm I'm generally equipped with most things that I need. So Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a design phase. Mm. Success. <laughs> it's a feature, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she's gonna head out and fan the fly out of her face as she heads across. <laughs> Another fly in space. Is... That doesn't that seems too annoying for space. One hopes not. There is, there are several airlocks uh, around the sphere. And so you head to sort of the one facing the Angobu ship and the black hole. And when you're in there waiting for the chamber to depressurize, you aren't fired out into space. How's Sila doing? She's feeling more overwhelmed than she's used to. The idea of losing anyone or of letting Akimba go by himself and just the risk of never seeing any of them or having them get back home. If she knows it's the best choice she can make for right now. She doesn't, again, it's roughly the third mission and it's still part of the same mission and it's trial and error but the one thing is she doesn't want to sacrifice the people that she cares about yeah 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 all right the airlock uh has fully depressurized and the exterior door opens and there. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to speak for you. I can't imagine I would ever, even in a spacefaring society, quite get used to just being out there. And Eli, you're running the the beam. Mm, sure am. Uh, so you get the alert that the, you get the alert that the airlock that the commander went to has, has opened. Um, and Silent 919 begins to, to drift in the correct direction because everything at this distance drifts in that direction. And Silent 919, you can you feel it immediately because it is so unusual to feel in space a pull, any sort of sense of direction. And it's almost like falling because that's the only gravity that you can feel. But it's it's gentle at this point still. She just kind of floats her way over and just takes everything in. It's one of the first times she's truly realizing that she's able to realize just how beautiful it all really is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a... your most dangerous spacewalk of the ones that you've had, but it's also somehow, because it's going to take you a little while to get to that ship, it's also sort of peaceful and it's obviously quiet and beautiful. Uh, Eli, you see once your commander is a little ways out from the ship, uh, you and the the ship's uh, systems are able to find her, to lock onto her. Um, and Silent 919, the, the two of you together can sort of uh, move your, your pieces so that the beam catches you, Sila, and it helps you sort of orient a little bit. And it is sending you towards this ship that grows ever larger. What does it look like? Oh, did we not talk about that last week? Cool. It is, uh, it is a... I mean, on approach as it's larger now. Like, yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can see that it is round, not unlike your sphere, but but it's sort of more of a of a ring almost, but with pieces that look. The closer you get, 
the more you are convinced that they look grown, little pods sort of all over it, inside, outside, top, bottom, whatever that means in space. But, um, and all uh, sort of ultimately linked together in the center of the ring with this shape that looks almost from your vantage point, almost like a tree. It's not, it's not organic, it's metal like the rest of the ship, but it looks, this more than any other part of the ship looks grown and, and does have, if it weren't shining metal, it would have uh, a very sort of organic look about it. And it's the top of the tree, the top of the, the canopy of the tree, as it were, that you're heading, that you're heading for right now. And as you get a little bit closer and the tractor beam reaches the Angobu ship, uh, the uh, Invicta Nikemba, you two hear the Angobu again. They, that strange sort of in your head knocking sound that they gave you last time. Enter. Thank you. We see that you have decided to do something to assist in whatever way you can. I do not, we do not believe that this measure will save us, but you have granted us time and that is worth much. So you wait, are, you repeat that? The, that is your ship's tractor beam that has caught us, yes? Yes, but the part about you don't think you're going to make it. Uh, no, simply that the tractor beam itself will not save us, but it has given us an incredible gift of time that we might find solutions. All right. We thank you. We were not sure and would have understood. And yet here you are in dangerous path, doing what you may. You may consider that we have you in the tractor beam, but our, we've sent over someone to your ship to assist you. It's not just the tractor beam that we're here to do. We're here to attempt to assist you. There is, they've been pretty good about their mental communications being verbal, right? Like speaking to you, but you, you two in Victor and Akemba realize that they are capable of much more and, and many different and nuanced and varied ways of communication because what you feel as you say that Akemba, what both of you feel is panic. And not, you have, you know, they have kept a grip on their panic as their ship falls into a black hole, but you telling them that, Ikemba sends them to a new level. And it's can... just an instant. Go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to talk to them, but continue. You were saying anything. It's it's just an instant, and then they're, they have control again, and they they switch back to uh, to, to words, and they say to you, who? Who have it, you sent? Does it matter who? Yes. Why does it matter? There is a pause. And they finally say, we suppose it doesn't as much as we thought. Somehow I doubt this. You. Why does it matter? We need to know. One of you, all of you have much to see and much to learn and much depends upon your seeing and learning. But one of you, one of you will have 
understanding beyond the others. And one of you will be tested beyond the others. And Which nothing we Sorry. cannot do. No, it's okay. No, 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 it's okay. You, that's fine. I think that's absolutely, that's what you want to know. And there is that hiccup in their, in their speech and they say, It is not time to know soon. Um, one thing you're short on right now is time. Yes, we are. And yet your assistance gives us hope that perhaps we have more than we imagined. I'm also Stop concerned. Being... Please and Victor, go ahead. No, I just was going to echo that concern and ask them to stop being cryptic. Exactly that. You've told us that one of us will be tested. You've told us that you haven't said a word. The moment I mentioned sending a member of our crew to your ship, I felt the panic and fear. And now I find out that one of us will be tested. I don't know which one of, it, which one of us it is, it may be the one that's coming to assist you. And we know nothing of the test. We need to know what you know as soon as possible with words. And if possible, the emotions you have behind them. Because this helps us to assist you without this. We cannot. They pause again, and there is a, you're mentioning the, the emotions, uh, you, you, you know, you sort of felt them open up a little. They're not pouring anything like they were with the panic, but you feel that your connection to them has sort of deepened in some way. And you feel them feeling pride and sadness and resignation, but they don't say anything else, at least not right away. And for the moment, there are other concerns because uh, Silent 919, you are now approaching uh, the ship in a real way and as you have been approaching, that pull, that falling sensation and the pull has gotten stronger. And you can compensate, but it's there. And you can tell you got, whether it's an instinct or a calculation through your processes, you can tell that you can't stay here long if you wanna make it back. And you can see now that you are going to land in a matter of a minute or so, right on the top of that canopy looking part in the center of the ship. And you really don't see, you see no hatches, you see no windows, just the burn of their engines at the far side of the ship. And you touch down more heavily than you were prepared for because every meter closer that you get, the heavier you are, the stronger that pull is. Yeah. Go ahead. I do a really solid superhero landing because of like how fast I'm following, like or falling. Like, could I just like make sure if I'm gonna land with that much force, it's at least stylish? Oh yeah, and you know it's coming. Like it is no surprise. So yeah, right. absolutely. Absolutely. Three point landing or something else? Boom. Yeah. Pull down, fist, glance Heck yeah. up. Heck yeah. Um, as soon as you touch the ship, you feel a sort of pressure in your cognition 
processes and you realize that this whatever they are broadcasting to Invicta and Akemba is much, much stronger through contact. Your helmet uh, is, is still managing to block out direct communication, but you are aware that they are remarkably powerful and that contact with their ship of all things has enhanced that connection a hundredfold. But the helmet's still keeping it out. Do I see a way, like a course of entry? Do I need to like climb down this area or? Um, maybe there is a hatch or an entry place further down this tree shape, but here at the top and around on the ring where you can see anyway, you don't see any hatches. Just gonna climb down and like go further down onto the base of the like tree-like portion of it and see like maybe if underneath that, there's an entry port. Yeah, absolutely. As you uh, climb down, you get sort of past the, the top of the tree part and sort of begin heading down the, the trunk uh, and you can see it now. The ship had sort of blocked it from your view while you were heading down there and while you were sitting on top, but you can see it and it's more than just a pinprick, not much, but every millimeter of size that that black hole gains is that much more impressive, I guess is the word, that power. And at that point, still no sign of an entrance hatch, but that pressure hasn't abated. Well, Sila, against Kosa's voice in her head and her better judgment is gonna take the helmet off. And as soon as you do, you feel the connection sort of solidify to your cognition servers. And now all three of you, Invicta and Akemba and Silent 919, you feel a very quick sequence of sort of reaction emotions. The first one is relief, but it is immediately replaced with horror. And then more than anything, sadness and gratitude in equal measure. And before anything is verbalized, I think we'll take our break for this evening. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Uh, I didn't, was not, didn't think they were gonna go out uh, into the, this is great, I love role-playing games. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for hanging out, y'all. We're gonna take a quick break so that we can take care of ourselves and you should absolutely please do the same. Uh, we'll be back in five to 10 for the second half of episode nine to find out uh, what's gonna happen with Sila down on that ship hurtling towards that black hole. No, sir, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I like it.
Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out, for sticking around for this, our second half of our penultimate episode of season nine. We're in a situation. Uh, this strange alien Angobu ship that, that requested assistance and is being real cryptic and irritating uh, has called you all to a black hole ostensibly to save them from it, though no one seems to have any real idea how they expect you to do that. Silent 919 has decided to take it upon herself as the only non-organic and as the commander of the ship, presumably, to go down there and figure out if there's a way that she can help. Uh, so we're gonna start with uh, back with you real quick, Sila. Uh, down there, you've touched down and you have connected with the you have connected with the um, the Angobu telepathy uh, by taking your helmet off and you felt that sort of series of emotions, uh, but no communication. And you still haven't found a way into their dang ship. What you doing? I think now she's just gonna try to make a connection and see if she can find like which direction to move towards to find some sign of life. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you sort of let whatever that is uh, in a little bit and a voice just to you, Silas says, um, ah, we should have known it would be you. So Please. Sorry? Does that mean? It means you care deeply for your crew. And if one of you was going to come, in the end, it was always going to be you. You wouldn't have allowed anyone else. Correct. Come inside. And... Not to be a bother, but... I've been trying to find my way in for a, a, quite a few minutes. Can you give me directions to the closest door? Uh, and as you ask that, a portion of this trunk uh, begins to sort of, you know that like liquid plastic stuff that you blow those like permanent bubbles in? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Like the little goop stuff that you blow the yeah, little, like thing. Yeah, so it's like, it's sort of like that part of the hull here begins to form a little bubble and it expands and expands and a little, it's not exactly a tear, but a little aperture, a little opening sort of forms in this bubble. And that voice again says, step inside. Walk this way, you know what I mean, baby? Hey, hey. She steps in. And af as you do, after you do, the tear seals itself. And the whole of this bubble begins to, and yourself included, begins to sort of, the only way to describe it is absorb back into the hull, the trunk of this ship. Like Alex Mack. Like Alex Mack. Thank you. Alex Mack, where's a hat? God, I haven't thought about that show in a minute. As you uh, go inside, I want to go back to the ship, back to this conversation that Ikemba and Invicta have been having with the Angobu, and to check in on Eli, who you have seen, you watched uh, Sila make it to the ship and then walk out and away from, from the tractor beam. So at this point, you've got the ship, and I, I guess you're, well, you all tell me, the three of you, uh, have play your scenes. Um, I guess, uh, I mean, I'm still just where I'm at, uh, and trying to figure out a plan to, I guess, like configure the tractor beam, um, so that it's more on a, uh, like a button or like a, a pre program button, oh. uh, so that you're going to set your stream deck up so that you can. Yeah, so if, if so, if Sila is rushing out of there, uh, I don't have to like 
you know manually adjust the tractor beam it's just like <laughs> click right okay and yeah yeah that's okay. what i'm doing great uh, um, I think you also, I think there are all kinds of, you know, readouts and data and whatever. And I think you are uh, aware uh, yourself and then the readouts confirm it that, you know, the the longer it is that Sila is down there, the more pull the tractor beam is going to have to manage to get her out of there mm -hmm. and anyone else that may want to come with her. The good thing mm -hmm. is she's obviously, she's a much smaller, right? Much, much lower mass object than a ship. Mm -hmm. uh, so you will be able to pull her back, but but the longer she's down there, the more power that will require. And, uh, you know, you're aware that the uh, energy is finite uh, on this ship at the moment. Mm -hmm. Not running out, but like there's only so much. Yeah. Okay, so there you are setting that up, keeping a close eye. And Victon and Kemba, you all were talking uh, to the Angobu, feeling those things, asking them questions that they just weren't answering. There was a moment of silence, and then you felt that that flood of series of emotions uh, as Sila connected to you. You uh, probably aren't aware that that's what it was, but in that moment that Sila connected to the Angobu, uh, you felt all of those things through the link. Captain, are you all right? Yes, they just brought me inside. Does anything seem out of sorts? You're still, it's a long process. You, I didn't tell you this, Isla, but you, as you get absorbed in, you sort of get the sense that you are traveling and moving through some sort of tube, almost tube, capillary, whatever. Um, but you haven't, you can't really see anything yet. You mean she's in a vessel of the vessel? No. Oh. I'll let you know when I'm safe and where I'm supposed to be. Then we will be at alert here on the ship in the meantime. And then the camera just passes that on to the rest of the crew because there's no not passing all all the information going on right now sure well i sure. don't know like you are okay because right. at this point i was just i was just violating it, it everyone was happy, happy with your everything. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. there is no i don't know what's happening and i'm not telling the team it can be okay, okay. every possible lick of information to yeah. everybody here because mm -hmm. yeah. this dreadful helmet still on you know oh yeah yeah oh yeah it's it's, it's growing on you not and literally. it's visible to Kemba, hence he's passing everything on. <laughs> Got you. it. All right. Sila, as you continue to travel through, um, the voice returns to you and says, um, we must be quick. Time continues to grow shorter. We hope this will be comfortable for you. And uh, I'm so sorry. That just really startled me. <laughs> the alert beacon. Uh, yeah. As they say that to you, your uh, your bubble, as it were, um, exits this tube system, and you find yourself being set down in this little bubble, which then sort of very slowly pops and dissolves around you um, in a, what looks for all the world like, like a, I, you can help me determine exactly uh, how you would refer to it, but a, a Mansagene spa almost, a place, a maintenance place and a sort of refurbishment place you you see and recognize technology and machines meant to clean out uh circuitry and meant to uh, obviously not repair but you know buff and clean and shine and and update uh systems and softwares and aside from you it's empty of people hello we are here 
in my head or in person because there's no one here. Yes, we are both. We are different than you. We move through the galaxy differently and cannot be perceived by most sentience, not clearly, not without risk. But we are here and we are grateful that you are here. Do you wanna come with us? If we don't have much time, then get your crew and we can go to back to the tractor beam and I can get everyone aboard our ship and we can be safe. As you say that there is a rumble uh, in this ship and I lie and anyone else watching the sensors back on the sphere uh, would immediately recognize that another engine has failed on this ship. In that moment. The voice said, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. In that moment, it came bolts away from his desk mm -hmm. and just kind of like nods the two of them and just says, I'll be back shortly. And he just bolts. Okay, great. Where, where Silent, I went. Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, let's play this out. Go ahead. Oh, he's already gone. <laughs> you don't have like an earpiece or anything. Oh, did, he had no time to put the earpiece in. He, he literally said, I'll be back shortly and bolted. You can use the all calls if you, re if you wanted to, Invicta. You would know whether he responds or not, but you could, you know, there are all call PAs that you could use. Akamba. I'll be back Aging shortly. A, uh, I'll be back shortly. Like he's just like bolting. Like, I'll be back shortly. I'm handling a thing. I don't like you when I return to my station. And like he just like starts like typing on his pad to like do a thing. thing. Okay. So we will we will find out what that's about momentarily, but I do want to hop back down real quick. Uh, as Invicta and and I lie. Kemba just runs by. No preamble. Sila, um, you are down there and they inform you. We have lost a second engine. Your cruise tractor beam is all that keeps us here now from falling at a insurmountable pace. You do not have the capability on board your magnificent ship to sustain us. We are our vessel and it is us. We cannot survive away from it. You've resigned yourself that this is the end, correct? Is that what I'm hearing? We had not, but with the second engine failed, we know, we see no other paths out. So why did you call us? Desperation and necessity. Desperation because we thought perhaps you and your crew of all people being here, being within range, perhaps there was a chance, a necessity, because if there wasn't a chance, we could not go to oblivion without first giving you this. And I would like here, for just a moment, we're gonna switch up our uh, our overlay a minute because I would like a moment alone with Sila 919. Um, the rest of you, I'm not going to make you take your headphones off, but if you would like to really sure. just get the immersion and wanna take your headphones off for a few minutes while I speak with Sila, uh, that would be welcome. And I'll wave at you when you can come back. Cool, cool. Let's go over, shall we? So 
Silent 919, they say that. They say, because we had to give you this gift. And immediately you feel a part of this ship. Your cognition circuits, not just, I shouldn't say that, not just your cognition circuits, every part of you becomes a part of this ship. You feel the thrusters, you feel the, the failed engines almost as injuries. You feel the strain of the remaining two engines like it is a, it is a physical strain on a, on a person. You understand the pull of the black hole in a way that that you couldn't before because this, you are now at once yourself and also this massive ship. And in this sort of unity, the Angobu send you a gift and you feel it right up against your servers. But the Angobu have sort of learned their lesson and the voice says to you as, within you, you say, this is how we experience space and our ship and ourselves. And we have invited you so that you might understand we have a gift, but we will only give it if you invite it. We understand now that Though we are many as one, your individuality is what makes you, you, and what makes you important. And in that, you may choose. May we bestow our last gifts upon you. Sarah takes in all of the emotions and all of this connection to the ship and to this. Feeling. Mm -hmm. And as angry as she is that her crew ran the risk of how is it? And you immediately, instantaneously have a new subroutine, have a new ability, have a new file, have a new data packet. You understand the mysterious machine's language. You can read it. You can translate it. You can speak it. You can understand it. And you can share that data, that software with whomever and whatever you choose. And once you've received that, the voice says, you say, the ship says, that is our first gift, understanding for all. You will learn much, you will discover much. You must for you to understand the peril that you and your crew and your world are in. We have another gift, but it is not for you. Will you deliver it for us? Will you pass this gift to the one who will be tried and tested more than any of the rest of you? Will you do that for us? Yes, I understand. And this time you receive another information packet, but you can't access it because it almost feels like a physical thing within you. You can feel it sort of traveling through your circuits and it ends up going down into your hand and you feel 
a little tingling in your hand. And if you look at it, you see that there is just a little light shining from your hand. And the voice says, speak these words when the time is right, when your destination is in sight, when he knows, but he does not yet comprehend. Take his hand and speak this word to him, and he will know, and he will understand, and the rest is up to all of you. And you know that at whatever this moment is, not now, when you get to where you're going, when you see, when you, when you know but don't understand, whatever the hell that means, you are to take Ikemba's hand and you are to speak a single word to him. Suwo. You must survive. You must pass on our last gift. Thank you. We never imagined that you would be willing to sacrifice yourselves for us. We desired help and we desired to help. And because of your bravery, we can do both. If your lives end today, your legacy won't. My people, our people, exist far beyond the normal bounds of time and age. And yet, that promise of a legacy carried on by another, one who is not of us, that is remarkable. When you are ready, and another bubble begins to form. Silas stands there with all of this knowledge and all of these emotions slightly unraveling under the just residual fear that she's been coping out of all day. She just says, I'm sorry, and hops into the bubble. And as the bubble Alex Max back into the form of the ship. The voice says, we cannot think of a single thing you have to be sorry for. And you're taken into that tube and you begin to travel. And I'm going to see if I can get their headphones back. And we're going to go back to our, uh, to our lobby scene so we can bring everybody back on screen. Here we go. For just an instant, Ikemba and Invicta and Sila, uh, and uh, Eli, for just a moment, a second, not more, your connection to your commander vanished. But before you could even verify that in fact, the comms had been cut and you know the, the other tetherings to the ship had been disrupted, before you can even be sure, it's back. 
Silent 919, you come out of your bubble at the back at the top of the ship, and it is heavy. Your time is short, Eli, you know that as well. I want to check in with Akemba to see what, if it's the, the moment to do so, to see what Akemba has been up to. I feel like the second you check back with Akemba, Akemba is like heading back to his station. Okay. And uh, still like finishing up with a couple things on his forearm, just like a device that he's been, he's had, he just doesn't use very often. Sure, sure. And uh, he looks at Eli and just preparations in order. And then nods at uh, Invicta and just like, you should receive a message shortly. And he starts typing. Right. While I'm waiting on this message, I uh -huh. I call out to to Sila. 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 You don't answer. We're going to hail the ship and find out why you're not responding. That moment is when Sila pops back up out of the bubble. Yeah. Goes, Sila 919, you thought it was Bila 919. Ha, 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 ha. Nervous laughter. Are you all right? I'm fine. I've accomplished what I came to. Let's get me out of here. You heard her, I lie. I will start the tractor beam onto Sila 919 to get her out of there. Yeah. Is anyone coming with you? Everyone and no one. That makes that. absolutely no sense. That's all I got. That's far more cryptic than you're usually than you usually are. Captain, are you all right? Something like that. I don't believe you're right, but we can worry about that once you're back on the ship. So sure. I lie. Mm -hmm. Cutting it close. Mm -hmm. Cutting it close. Um, preset button. Preset button. <laughs> preset button. <laughs> preset button. Absolutely. Uh, so it you know prepared. reverses whatever starts pulling her. It's it's fine. But you uh, you see and you I mean this isn't you know we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna pretend that this is like an in the moment oh shit and whatever. Yeah. But so you knew this was coming. But the tractor beam by itself is isn't going to be enough. You're gonna need to start rerouting some power or something, which you can do. Uh, it's just a matter of from where, how much, and how quickly. I reroute power from weapons and look at Akemba. Okay. And Akemba just noted. Just like he presses a button, a couple buttons on his pad, and just suddenly, uh, Eli has more power. All right. It's almost enough, Eli. Oh my god! Oh my! <laughs> I lie. And then Akemba sees that frustration, and then just like starts typing in on his pad, and just like uh, adjusts a couple of things on his end, and mm. gives Ally a bit more power. From where? Um, from. Sorry, Tati. We'll get to you in just a second. From the med bay. Ah. Okay. Uh, temporarily reducing the requirement of the power in the med bay because he knows okay. that uh, last he remembered. Uh, <clears throat> our crewmate was still in the med bay, but doesn't need full power, and the med bay doesn't need all of the power to keep her sure. stable. So he's just like, alright, cool. I'm gonna lower it just about twenty percent because sure. oxygen's still fine. All of the important bits of the med bay are still fine. He just it doesn't need to be full blast because yeah. full blast for that med bay required more than yeah. just one person. So he's like, alright, cool. He, he's basically essentially giving her the power that would it would require if he were in there assisting with the medbay technology. Got it, got it, got it. Since he okay. doesn't need to Great. be there. Great. Close it gets it. a little bit more power 
<laughs> or uh, doesn't because it Coz gets the same amount of power right, i like right, it's right. a bit more power to do what he's doing got it uh invicta you had something um i was going to route all power except for the 80 percent of the med bay okay and what we need for um surviving on the bridge <laughs> that's to... yes a good call mm-hmm, mm-hmm. basically yeah. the library my quarters any place we can sure. draw energy from oh i love that okay all right Um, I love it. So with all of that, all of that power, all of those sections of the ship powered down either in part or in full, and and Eli, you have access to them. Um, Mm -hmm. So here's here's what I want you to to do. I don't think we need to switch because it's, uh, we're gonna sort of play with it a little bit uh, the way we're gonna do it. But I would like for you to put together a dice pool to bring Sila back aboard. And you can use uh, an additional, uh, we're, we're sort of, uh, how do I want to do this? How do I say this rather? We're sort of like, don't worry too much about how Cortex actually works in this moment because we're going to do something a little different. So you're going to set up a dice pool. And what I'm going to let you do is I'm going to let you add a D8 to your total after the roll mm-hmm. if you need. Mm-hmm. And for each D8 that you use, you're basically using power from all of these places. Now, using it means that it's like you are using it. It will be a while before those areas are back up and running at full power. Um, but you can choose to do it after the rolls. Mm-hmm. So um, so I don't think we need to switch to roll screen. Where I, there's a couple of other things I want to play out while you're putting together your pool. So go ahead and get working on that, and I'll come just, right back to just you. Just to make sure we're not yep. pulling power from any of the life rafts if we have to like jettison no right now i'm I, hopefully what i have so far will be enough cool, cool, uh, cool which cool, is cool. weapons um Good uh, weapons know. quarters library med bay in part so we'll have a you'll uh, that one will be a, a d4 since it's only 20 percent mm-hmm. um and then we'll go from there if we need to all right all right uh, while you put that together, Sila919, you are there. You uh, are able to step directly into that tractor beam and you feel yourself get a little lighter, but you're still being pulled down. And then as the first little goose of power, uh, you feel the ship begin to fall away underneath you. And have you put the helmet back on? I don't really see a need for it right now. Yeah, um, good, because you are not fully integrated with the ship anymore, but you still very much are attuned and you just feel gratitude and peace as you hover there and the ship slowly begins to fall away beneath you. Um... Why is your name escaping me? I lie. I had to look at the overlay. I lie. <laughs> uh, what did you roll? Uh, okay, so rolling for Misajai because I don't like yes. the um, Ngobu uh, survive. Yes, sure. Uh, and duty because. And you uh, can, sorry, okay. but just before, because I want to capture you before the hit, you hit the button. Go ahead and add a D8 just for the tractor beam. Okay, okay, okay. To start. Mm-hmm. Tractor beam. All right, so I have 4D. Four D8s, essentially. That's it. Roll. That's it. Roll it up. <sighs> okay. 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 Oh, damn. All right. So you all can't see it, but uh, Eli rolled double eights for his total. So that is a 16. Uh, it's not enough uh, mm-hmm. because it's a black hole, but mm-hmm. that's a very good start. And, and you probably won't have to siphon all of the energy out of the rest of the ship. So that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, so you have choices. Uh, if you want to, uh, I mean, if you want to explain to me narratively, you can use a plot point to add one of the other dice to your total, uh, or you can just roll another D8 and we will add that no plot points required, but it will siphon energy from a section of the ship. We are siphoning. Um, yeah, that seems wise, honestly. We'll siphon. Honestly, I want to siphon from, uh, so I just want to get this over with and the med bay we can do next. So sure. Uh, what the acting CO or captain has said uh, to um, get the power from like all the other places other than the med bay. 
Okay, great. So we'll, we'll uh, so do it. You can have a D8 for, mm -hmm. we'll say just living quarters. Okay, I'll roll that. And we will just add that to your 16. So that's a two, two. that brings it to 18. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, as you are, as you are rerouting this power, the pull of the black hole gets stronger. So at 18, still not quite enough. Med bay, we doing it. Med bay, that'll be a D4 because mm -hmm. it's only 20% of the med bay. We're not, we're not giving you more power than that. Three, okay. Hey, so that, what was it? An 18, a 21. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have that. One more area. <laughs> all right uh, all right let's see it we had a 20 well you i mean you're not gonna fail there but let's go. see how oh hey there you go so that is a six which brings you up to a 28 uh no to a 27 okay. sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. uh which is which is five above so heroic success so uh sila won't be the worst for where sila you finally begin to feel the pull of the tractor beam overcoming that black hole pull like i said it's a good thing you're not a whole ship uh, and you begin to head back to the sphere. Uh, I guess as they're coming back, if um, if Invicta and Ikemba have been talking to Silo, because I, ha I have not been hearing, I guess they're just telling yeah, me. Yeah. Um, and on our own private comms, because... Uh, or not private comms, but like not sending a signal out. Are uh -huh, we uh -huh. <laughs> certain that uh captain's in the same state of being as they had left coming back? I don't trust it entirely because she doesn't sound fine despite what she said. But we'll see how she is when she gets on board. I mean, I agree. She does have to get in the airlock first, and it's not like she needs air immediately. <laughs> we're not. We're, we're not, not locking no. captain, the okay. captain in, a, in an airlock. I'm sorry, I just have yet. issues. With Did you the... say yet? Hmm? Did you just say yet? What? Uh huh. Carry on. Uh, I'm sorry. I I being overly paranoid because uh, I didn't like what they did to my mind before. Um, Cautious. I understand uh, your need for caution, I lie. And I understand, like, truly. I can't understand on the level that you understand, but understand that I understand that the security of this crew is paramount to everything that we do. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, as you both wish, and I will continue. Well, I never stopped bringing them along, yeah, here, but I was just more focused on bringing... Uh, Sal 919 back on board the tractor beam. All right. And about now, Sila, uh, it doesn't take long. Uh, you, you reach the exterior airlock door, which is sitting awaiting open for you. And you can step in, pressurize the chamber, and head back aboard your ship and aboard your crew. And it's as if, well, let's, let's let you get aboard first. <laughs> Ooh, don't be so excited to see me. We're always excited to see you. But concern is, of course, of the utmost. It wasn't what I expected. And we won't be bringing any other lives aboard. Can I just kind of look at her? Sure about that? you were kind of cryptic and you didn't sound fine. There were no 
bodies, so to speak. There were no just like they sounded in our heads, that's how they exist, except inside the system. What system? They're hive mind. They exist as a singularity, as one with I can't explain it. It's just they exist, but they are system and I have to process the information that they gave me. I look forward to knowing more about them. We don't know if they're biological. We don't know if they're mechanical. We don't know any more than you do. But we would love to, when you're ready. We would love to know more. It won't be a problem. Might be a solution, though. And that is extremely cryptic. We were concerned when you started being cryptic initially. That's more cryptic than before, hence more concern. Captain, please. There is Sila, more. Sila pulls out like a touchpad mm-hmm. and casts the picture up. Mm-hmm. And she puts up the language that they hadn't been able to translate before and perfectly translates it. And as the rest of you watch Sila bring up the files from the robots and translate it effortlessly, you all, uh, except Eli, hear a voice. There isn't any knocking this time. The voice says, we apologize for our lack of courtesy, but our time is short. We thank you for all you have done and all you will do. And you feel the link sever. And if you happen to look out the view screen, you watch as the last two engines of the Angobu ship, they don't break, they just stop. And the ship begins to fall away from you faster and faster until you can't see it anymore. Um, For the first time, I'll remove the helmet. I think, Eli, you remove the helmet, but you feel and hear nothing. They're gone. Mm -hmm. He didn't. He should go. Definitely. Um, I'll start gently taking us away from there. And as you begin to head away, your commanding officer back on board. The secrets of the language that has so bedeviled you all for so long, just given to you. Lots to learn now, lots to decode, lots to translate, lots to understand. And still a course is set to follow that signal one more time and hope that Maybe finally, between translating and getting to the sort or to the end point of that signal, maybe some answers are on the horizon. But that's for next week for our finale. And for now, we must bid you adieu. Hey, thanks, y'all. Uh, I did not know how tonight was going to go, and this wasn't ever in my brain. Uh, it was great though. You all are amazing and I, I adore telling stories with you. Thank you. You are constantly surprising me and I, I, I hope I can keep up is all I have to say. <laughs>
but this was great. Thank you. And thank all of you for hanging out with us once again for our penultimate episode uh, of Into the Motherlands. We should go around and uh, let you know who we all are, where you can find us, what we're up to uh, between now and next week's finale episode. Um, and I will now leave it in your capable hands who's first. I feel like I went through a whole bunch of emotional stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and knock this out. My name is yep. Christine Ariel. You can find me on the interwebs at Christine Ariel. That's K R Y S T I N A A R I E L O L E. It's the name my mom gave me, but Ariel's not my last name. So when you say stuff, don't be like Ariel, because that's not my last name. Anyway, um, <laughs> person, so good. Uh, yeah, I play Captain Silo 919, and that was fun. So, um, Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Do I, I feel like I know something now that- You do. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I like leverage. Um, <laughs> I, I'm also the host of Star Wars Empire Public Show on starwars.com. So feel free to check that out. You can go to starwars.com forward slash the higher public and catch up on all five episodes that we've done so far. We've got a whole bunch of cool stuff coming up with that. And uh Oh yeah, I've got some really cool stuff next week, next weekend, and the week after. And I'll tell you about it when it happens because you know I'm like talk on stuff that hasn't happened yet. Because little <laughs> little jigs up. Uh, I hope you all are having a great week, and I'm gonna turn it over to not me. <laughs> oh hi, I'm not me. Uh, otherwise known as DJ Knight on occasion. Uh, yeah, we're here. It's been. An amazing series of things. And also, I just understood a thing because leverage. There was no understanding of leverage. Really, there still isn't. But I understand the word leverage and what it means in the dictionary and concern. That's all. I'm Play Akimba, Musalian Bio Priest. You'll find me on Twitch, like basically all the sites at DJ Knight. And yes, even that one. But I don't go there on that one because i'm just there to make sure that nobody takes the name and does stupid things because the internet is itself you're awesome thank you for coming to hang out we appreciate you hello my name is michael sinclair second i go by michael crits everywhere um yeah this episode was all leverage there was there was you know uh our hand was covered the whole time and will divert power all day every day there was leverage anyway take that for what you will um <laughs> you can catch me on twitter as michael Kritz. um you can also um check out the newest ep when, when the episode drops it hasn't dropped yet but i was on i hate your deck with joe johnson who is an actor in orville um and we had a good time so uh we shot for that and that should come up at some point just check out the twitters and check out i hate your deck um and then i will at some point maybe play some magic gathering on my own stream um <laughs> i am a very busy person and uh yeah that's me i'm back in school uh stem nerd uh, yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> was there I never... something else you were gonna say i'm oh, sorry dj <laughs> i was gonna say i never uh can hear i hate your deck I hate your deck <laughs> i never hear that and it's i apologize for my laughter but it's just i always am going to hear something different that's all i'm saying <laughs> i love it our dm's laughter makes me understand that he understands where i'm coming from thank you very much <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome uh let's see last but not least i thought michael had something else to say oh i don't know I know I did a oh, year anniversary. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Um, I guess we're like, I don't know. I, I think just reflecting back on the whole year, it, it's it's been um playing Eli's like the biggest uh I don't know, the biggest I'm the I'm like very appreciative of being able to play Eli and the viewers trust me to do this and everyone in the cast trust me to do this. Uh, it's been a big part of the experience of playing uh, in into the motherlands and, mm. um, and also being able last season, the thing that i liked also doing is just seeing everyone's backstories. Cause we like, we're all very good um, role players here and being able to kind of take a peek of what drives each character, because we do, we, 
we drive our characters very well or play our characters very well and seeing like the cogs and all the things behind that uh has been really neat so um yeah just reflecting back on this year i think i is like the most pivotal important character i've ever played and oh. uh i enjoy i get to play them every week so thanks can't imagine anyone else playing them and can't imagine the crew without them have birthday motherlands yeah have birthday <laughs> have birthday Hi, I'm here. I keep coming back for some odd reason. Oh, it's my channel. I have no choice. Uh, I'm Tanya, Cypher of Tears. And uh, tomorrow, even though DJ forgot it, we're, we'll be doing more RPGs over at D&D's channel. Uh, DJ is our human ranger lycanthrope. Oh, hi, it's me. And, and I am your uh, draw dump here blood hunter with a little bit of beastie in her fen. Uh, that is the same time as Motherlands, but on D&D's channels. And then Sunday, I get to hang out with Eugenio again, but I will let him talk about that. <laughs> uh, sure, yeah, I guess that's me talking about. Real quick, uh, right below me, uh, back with us next week is our high-end fixture, Bria Iyengar. You can follow her on Twitter at Quiddy, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E, uh, and check her out. Uh, you can go back and watch uh, Xandria Unlimited, which she was the DM for, uh, Misfits and Magic over on Dimension 20. The Seven, uh, currently airing on Dimension 20, uh, probably like currently, like literally right now. Uh, and I feel like I'm forgetting something, but she'll tell you about it next week. Go follow Quiddy. Uh, and I have been Eugenio. I am your storyteller. Uh, very, very pleased to have been here. Thank you all so much. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and here on Twitch at DM Jazzy Hands, playing through Mass Effect 3 on my channel on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, back here, obviously, with you next Wednesday and Sunday. We had our season 11 premiere of Arrivals of Waterdeep this past Sunday. Uh, Urban Bohemian Brian Gray and I are co-DMing this season and it was a delight last, uh, last Sunday. The Rivals have had a year and we found out what they've been up to for a whole year and then we dropped a bomb on them that their home has been rented out for the first annual Rivals Con. Uh, so I'm very excited to see how that goes. Uh, Tani's character has volunteered to give the keynote speech, uh, and I'm very excited. Uh, so come check us out Sunday afternoon, uh, or su well, depends on where you are, Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific uh, on twitch.tv slash Rivals of Waterdeep uh, to find out what goes on there. Uh, I also have a podcast, The Last Refuge. Check it out. It's a D&D podcast. It's pretty dope. We've been going for four years. We drop new episodes on Wednesday, and I think that's... That's all we got for you. We are going to go and raid Pleasantly Twisted. Uh, Pleasantly Twisted is uh, was the brilliant artist behind the character art that you see here on the screen now and lots of other great stuff. Um, so let's pass all the love over there. Be good, behave, uh, and we will see you next week. Check out her finale. photo on Twitter. It's it's awesome. It it's amazing. Oh, yes, that too. Do Absolute that things. That too. Um, Someone dropped a photo that while we're raiding. Yeah, great. Uh, and we'll see you next week for our finale. Uh, until then, please stay safe, please stay healthy. Uh, and as always, happy gaming, y'all. See you next week.